In this new plan tips and space planning session, I'll cover the workflow process for creating a new project using a best practice approach, setting up key defaults, saving the new plan files according to file management recommendations, and then using a space planning approach to initiate the design process. Let's get started. When you are ready to begin a new project, you can leverage past work to increase and build upon your past efficiency. If it's your first project, then using the program's built-in templates will be a good starting point. To leverage your past work, such as dimension defaults or text defaults, schedules, layer sets, or say plan views you may have created, I will begin the new project by first opening up my last project, both the plan and layout, and create a set of templates for each. Let me first begin with the plan file. This is a plan that I recently completed and it has a lot of extra detail that I'm going to leverage in the project we're going to work on. You can see that I have a number of additional save plan views beyond what the basic template ships with for the program. This helps me in producing my construction documents. In addition, over in my project browser, I have a number of CAD details that I use for my plans. I also have schedule information that I can use and it will populate when I build a new project. So let's begin by saving this as a template file. Underneath the file menu, I'm going to come down to templates and I'm going to click save as new template. In the save as template dialog, I'm going to unmark CAD details. I want to make sure that I preserve those. I'm also going to uncheck schedules so I also preserve the schedules that I've created. There's an option down here to set this as your default template going forward. You can choose that if you desire or you can leave it open. Let me go ahead and click OK. The program is going to prompt you to save it. It will open up into the current version you're using into a folder templates. You can also store this in a separate template folder if you are managing your templates in that manner. I'm just going to give it a name called My Template Plan and go ahead and save it. Now you might notice what happened. The program opened up a brand new untitled plan. It's blank. It's also set to be using the plan view that I most commonly use. When I create the template, I want to make sure that I'm in the plan view that I most commonly use. You can always change it. You can always save right over the top of this template if you later make changes and want to update it. Let's move over to the layout file that I've completed. You'll notice as I come over into the project browser for the layout, I have a number of pages for this layout. I like to maintain all of these pages, save all of the text that you see in here. So as we kind of go through different pages and I'm recreating a new construction drawing for the project, I'm just filling in the blanks, modifying the text as I need to for the new project and it will save me a bunch of time. I'm going to return back to page one and then we're going to go through the same exact step underneath the file menu, come down to templates and save as template. In the save as template dialog, you can come in, make any adjustments. In this case, I'm going to accept all of the defaults. Again, at the bottom is the option. If you want to make this your template going forward, you can. I'm going to leave mine blank. Click OK. Program will prompt you to save it. I'm going to go ahead and call it my template layout. The new layout is open. It's devoid of all of the client and project specific information from the previous project. I will move over to page zero, which is the master sheet, and make any adjustments that I want to in here. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and open this up, and we'll just call it the Austin sample. You can make any other changes. On this sheet, it's the master sheet, so that means that on any of the sheets, it will show up as the same text. You can make any final adjustments and then save the file. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and save both the layout file and the plan file in a new folder for this client. When I save the plan and the layout file, I'm going to create a folder for the project. In the example I have on the screen, I'm using the Smith Residence. I'm going to make sure that I save the plan and the layout file since they're linked in that folder. You can also see that I have other information in here for renderings, photos, miscellaneous where you may want to save spec sheets 
or your contracts, and then the PDFs that I use to manage the construction documents and any other backup files. We have a separate webinar video session on file management. If you want to learn more about the specifics of this for this session, I'm going to go ahead and save these in to a folder that I manage for this project, similar to what we see on the screen. Let me first begin by saving the plan file. Underneath the file menu, I'm going to come down and choose save. The program is going to prompt me where I want to save it. I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a brand new folder for this project. I am using Windows for this particular video. In the Explorer, I'm going to click New Folder. I'll go ahead and give it a name and I'm just going to call it the Austin Project. Now that I've created the folder, make sure that I'm inside of this folder and then I'm going to give the plan name, just call it the Austin. I'll write the word plan at the end. Next, for the layout, I'm going to repeat a very similar process. Make sure that I'm on page one, come down, click save. I already have the existing folder set up. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to call it the Austin and I'll put the word layout at the end, be explicit. I now have both the plan file and the layout file created in a specific folder and I'm ready to begin the design process. Let me close all the other files with the exception of the floor plan. Prior to doing any design work, I'm going to set any defaults that I can that I know about the project in advance that will save me time when I begin the design process. Let me begin by looking at the default settings for both the floors and the roofs. Using the wrench tool for defaults, let's begin by looking at the defaults for the floors and rooms. And specifically, I want to come in and look at the floor levels. Currently, there is only one floor level and you can only set the default for floor one unless you happen to save your template with multiple floors. For the first floor, I know the client wants a 10 foot ceiling. I'm going to go ahead and make the change for the ceiling height to be 10 feet. That way when I do any design work, I won't have to change the ceiling since I know what that is in advance. Also, if you know information about the floor structure, you can make adjustments becomes very important as you're building multiple stories. Since I don't have a second story, the floor structure won't impact stacking. Eventually, when we get to the foundation information, I am probably going to make a change so that this part of this house is built on a slab. For the purposes of this session, I'm going to leave the floor structure set using a 2 by 14 eye joist. Let's take a look at the roof defaults. I know that this particular roof is going to end up being a flat style shed roof. So we'll make it easy. I'm just going to go ahead and change the pitch to be a 1 in 12 pitch with a flat roof. I know for this project trusses will not be used. If I know information about the overhang, I could make those changes. And again, we'll leave it at that until we get into the specifics in the roof session itself. With some of the default settings defined, it's ready to begin the conceptualization process for this project. You can use the wall tool and go in and draw the walls. I find that process a little bit tedious because I keep changing the configuration of the design. I prefer to go through a bubble diagram process and there's a couple of ways you can do that. Let's take a look at the first way. Underneath the tools menu is a space planning option. You can either use the assistant or you can place individual rooms. Let me just start by using the space planning assistant. The space planning assistant is going to ask you a handful of questions about what style of house. Just to make it simple, I'm going to make just one change and we'll accept all the other defaults and then place the room objects that you can then go through, resize and organize to the conceptual idea for the floor plan. You can also place individual rooms. As I go back up underneath the menu down here, you can place individual rooms directly from the menu. You can see that in my toolbar off to the side with this menu being active, you can also place them directly if you want to go ahead and grab additional rooms. Once you're finished organizing those, you can either trace around the objects with the wall tool or you can go back 
again underneath the menu for the space planner and there is the build house option and that will actually convert all of the objects into walls when they are adjacent and share a common wall that common wall will not be duplicated in that particular case let me undo this a couple of times I'll share an approach with you that works well for me I save room boxes it could be the room boxes we were just looking at or room boxes you make that are sized already to common room sizes that you use. Let me go in and open up a previous plan that I have that uses this space planning approach. And what I've done here is I save these rectangles for rooms and if I zoom in and take a look at these a little bit closer you can see that I have a label kitchen and on each side of it it has a dimension and then also the square footage. What I've done is use the rectangle tool, given it a name, and assigned it on a layer. Let me just double click and open one up. Let's take a look. So this is a polyline. You'll find that tool up here in the menu system. On the line style, you can see that I've assigned it to a layer for space planning boxes. And then the other thing I've done is I've checked the option to show the length. That's why you see the 20 foot and the 19 on the edges. On the fill style, if you wanted to put a slight fill, you can see that I have a slight gray. It helps when I'm tracing over that with a wall. And then on the label, I've put in a specific label, called it kitchen. I've used the macro, rounded area, square feet. You'll find that macro underneath of the user defined down here at the bottom. And that will give you the rounded information for the square footage. I place these rooms in a separate plan and these are the typical room sizes that seem to work well for many of the designs that I create. That's not to say that they will not change in shape and size. They just happen to work well for me. You notice as I zoom in I actually have one of the space planner boxes so you can kind of see the difference and then what I do is I'll make a copy of these so let me just zoom out and I'm going to draw a marquee around all of the space planning boxes. I'm going to copy them, Control C or Command C on the keyboard. I'm going to go over into the floor plan that we've already saved, and I'm just going to paste these off to the side. Now, when I press the space bar, notice in my floor plan shell, that layer is not on. So let me just turn the layer on so we can easily see these. When I'm finished organizing those, in this floor plan shell, I'll turn the layer back off. So at this point, I will go in and begin the process of reconfiguring these room boxes around so that I can lay out the design depending on the location of different items. And if I kind of just skip ahead and show you what I've done here, so let me just fade this in. Well, this is a layout I've ended up with this project You'll notice that I've actually overlaid a few of the elements and given a few custom names. This kitchen is going to have a couple of different islands. You can see that the bigger room box behind it, the kitchen, is underneath of it. And I took the islands and just positioned over the top, roughly to give me some distance. If you have your temporary dimensions on, you can click on these objects and use them to space so if you want to make sure you have a walkway in there, I don't spend too much time with the details until I get a approximate layout that's going to work for the flow of the design. And then I can use the wall tool and trace around these items. I want to now take a look at the process of moving up to the second floor, building a second floor, making sure that we've set the defaults for that floor, and then we'll go through kind of a similar process. In the build menu, I'm going to come up and come down to the floor and build new floor. Most of the time, if you've drawn walls, the best way to drive that second floor is to follow the footprint from the first floor. Since I don't have any walls at this point, I'm just going to use the option to make a blank new second floor. The program asks about the default settings. Earlier in the session, we were able to set the default settings for floor one at 10 feet. I didn't have the option to set them at the time because the second floor didn't exist for that second floor. As I'm building it, I can now come in and change this, and I want to set it up to use a nine-foot ceiling. You can see over in the stacked story pole, 
that we have a 10 foot ceiling on floor one and then we've got the nine foot ceiling for floor two and you see the cavity in between which is using the 14 inches. I like to try to set that so that I don't need to make changes when I'm doing my elevation views. If that's going to be a larger floor truss or a smaller joist, I won't need to make changes later on. So I try to make sure when I'm building a new story that I review the floor structure. We'll go ahead and open that up. And in this particular case, the 2 by 14 and the 3 quarter inch for the subfloor works well. So now that I built the second floor, it's set up to be blank. I'll pull in the room boxes and reconfigure the layout for it. Let me fade that in and let's take a look at what the final space planning boxes look like. That wraps up this first session on new plan tips and space planning. The next session will cover drawing walls from the conceptual space plan, building the roof for purposes of massing and sizing. Okay. All right. Well, we're ready to take your questions that you may have that you'd like to ask. In the process of doing that, just raise your hand. You'll find that setting in the Go to Webinar control panel. Raise your hand and then Adrian. I'm going to ask Adrian to do the question moderating. When she calls on you, just make sure you unmute your mic. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Adrian. Thanks, Scott. Um, as we wait for a few questions to roll in, we had uh, one chatted in about making a countertop plan. Is there a way that you could show us what a countertop plan might look like? Okay, sure. Uh, let me grab an example of one of my plans here. Yeah, let me just open one of those up. So I find one here. So a lot of times people want to go through and create a, a countertop specific plan. And in those cases, you probably want to make sure that you've dimensioned the countertop, maybe turned off layers that, in this case, I've got cabinets, I've got call-out cameras, and other noise that probably you want to turn off furniture and those kinds of things. So typically what I would do in that case is create a layer set and create a dimension default. So when you're dimensioning your countertops, it will only pick up those items. So if I were just to show that, I have a save plan view that I've created specifically called countertop. And when I switch this over to the countertop, it changes the layer set and you can see that the dimensions are also turned on to locate those items. In your edit active view settings, if we were just to kind of peek at this for the selected defaults, you can see that I have dimensions specifically for countertops, my text, and also a layer set down here at the bottom specifically for the countertop. And when I switch to say plan view, it invokes all of these things. And if you were just to kind of peek at my dimension settings in here, we come down and you look at what we're going to be locating. It's only locating for the cabinets and specifically for the countertop. So this is typically what I would do. And then I'm actually using our newest version here. It's in beta X14. You can create a schedule for your countertops. And if I were to come over, open up my project browser, and then come down into my details where I place my countertop schedule. I can create a schedule specifically for those countertops. You can see that as we zoom in, let's just kind of pick on a little bit of this information in here. You see the symbol of the countertop. It gives you a label number, the square footage, thickness. There's also several other columns you can add to the schedule. And then one of the options that I'll do also is at the bottom down here is I'll run the total column so you can total up the square footage for those countertops. So hopefully that helps create a layer set, set up any dimension defaults you want. And if you save it in a save plan view, you can include that in your template plan. If that's something you do all the time, then you'll have access to that setting.
Awesome. Thanks. Um, our first uh, live question is going to be from Charles Waihara. Uh, go ahead and unmute your mic and you can ask for your question, Charles. Hi. Uh, good morning, Scott. Uh, Hi, Charles. Question for you. I really, I really like using the, uh, the room boxes that come out of the, uh, the program. But like you said, I end up using um, my own uh, rectangles that I can break the mm -hmm. edges on. Is there any plans coming out in chief to be able to break the room planning boxes so I can make uh, L-shaped rooms or angled rooms, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the question, Charles. So you want to be able to break the rooms, create L rooms or other shaped rooms. And when we go back into the program, and let me just open up one of my space planner files. So I've got this this space planner file, and I really can't create the break. Charles, when when you use the space planner, do you use the build house out of all of the all of the rooms? If all of my rooms are rectilinear like that, yeah, that that's a great uh, time saver rather than trace over the uh, polylines. But yeah, um, you know, if if I could add a break line anywhere in that uh, uh, box, that would really speed things up. Yeah. So the the answer is we don't have a break tool for the space planner box. Um, I will make sure we write that down. It, you saw that. In my presentation, I'm actually using a standard polyline box that I've sized. And in that case, I can break it. I can reshape it to whatever I want. The disadvantage to that is when I go to build the house, it's not going to enable me to create the walls automatically. Now, I'm, I'm also curious that that's exactly what I end up doing. I know Chief has a build build wall from CAD line um, function. Is there a way to change those all in the CAD lines to kind of automate the uh, that function that you're doing right now? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think if we took this and we separated the line, there's a tool down here in my lower edit menu called Disconnect from Selected Edge. So you can isolate the line and... I think by the time you go through and you have all of those boxes, individual lines, and you go yeah. through <laughs> and you say, Bill, it, it may More have trouble than it's worth. It may have been a little faster to just trace over the top of them. Okay, so we, we can't explode that whole yeah, box. Boom. Yeah. Uh, let, let, me, um, let me just pause here. I think Al wants to weigh in on that. Uh, if you want to create uh, something like a, an odd shape all you have to do is put two of these together with the same same name and kind of put them together or overlap them when you build it it'll knock the uh, the intersecting wall out yep that that's true but sometimes when you get uh like let, let's say angled uh an l-shaped room with an angle on one wall chief doesn't always honor it it, it does funny things because I've, I've tried that before and uh you know, it just seems like all those room planning boxes are based on polyline. I mean, are, are line based, right? So um, adding a break line tool in the box would, would, well, you know what I'm saying, Scott, rather than do your workaround. Because basically what you're showing us is a workaround to the out of the box product that Chief comes with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I'll make sure we capture that. I. I personally use um, just the room boxes and trace over the walls because I'm using different types of walls and different styles of walls. And that's what works for me. But uh, being able to add a break in those, in those room boxes, I'll make sure we capture that request. That's a good, that's a good one. Plus the other, the other thing with the, the polyline boxes, if, if you turn on your reference, uh, your reference floor below or floor above, they don't mm -hmm. show through, so you can't really trace over your mm -hmm. boxes from the floor below. I know you can copy and paste it up to the second floor, um, mm -hmm. unless you have a workaround for that one. Well, I think you should be able to do that. Let me, I got a lot of, a lot of stuff open here. Let me grab that. <clears throat> so I just opened up our reference display, and right now it's using the automatic reference display. But if I come in here 
and let's make sure we turn on the correct layer. And let's go up, toggle it on. So I can toggle it on, toggle it off. And, and all I've done here is in the reference display setting is I turned on the space planning boxes. Ah, perfect. Or, or whatever layer you may have drawn your objects on that you want to display. You can turn those on. Great. Thanks a lot. I appreciate work? the presentation. Perfect. You bet. You bet. Okay, Scott, our next question is from Amy Pearson. Um, go ahead and unmute your mic and you can ask your question, Amy. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, Amy. Hi, how are you? Welcome, yeah, uh, good. Um, lately, I've been working with several um, developers and architects who will send me a PDF to start with and then I'm ending up making my floor plan adjustments from there. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me the right layer to import that onto so that I have it as a reference, it can draw on it, but then can make it disappear. I feel like I, I'm always starting on the first floor and I don't know if I should be setting that as a reference plan or if there's a better way to do that. Sure, so you're getting a floor plan from your architect. He is, or she is sending you as a PDF file. Yes, most people okay. are not giving me a DWG even if I ask for it. Um, okay. So basically, I might be doing some interior work based on that or assisting a client um, in doing some space planning and moving walls around and then sending that back to the architect in order to make modifications prior to build. Yeah, sure. So I've, I've also heard the same request, whether it's an image or a PDF. So let's just push this out as a PDF file and we'll go through and I'll just kind of show you how I might do it. So if I export this out as a PDF and we'll just save it out and to my desktop. So I've got this PDF, right? And if I go through and let's do a brand new plan. And now if I find this, let's go file import as a PDF. And where are we here? Import PDF. And we'll go to the desktop and we'll find that guy that we just exported. So I'm just going to go through and accept the defaults that we have there. And so this is, uh, this is the PDF we just imported. And in this case, I have a couple of dimensions on here. So one of the things that I do when I import this, whether it's a PDF or an image, I'll select the object and I like to put it on a specific layer. So if I open this up by double clicking on it, and usually you can find that on the line style, it came in on a default CAD layer. Do you see that okay? Yes. And let's just click define. And what I might do, I may have that other layer in here, but let's just make a copy of the CAD default. And what I'm going to do is you might just call this something that's obvious to you. I'm going to put a space in there so it shows up at the front. And we're just going to call this PDF footprint. Make sure the layer is turned on. So and now I've isolated that to a specific layer that would be easy to turn on and turn off. And then when I go and trace over this, um, you know how to scale it okay. If you click on the scaling, we can use the point to point resize and let's find a bigger wall here. So it looks like this wall here is 36 feet. So what I might do in the point to point resize is come in here and this will just help me when I scale it. And we say that this is 36 feet, which is what it looks like that dimension is. So then when I trace over this, it'll have a little bit of relativity when I um, go through the effort of drawing over those walls. Oh, that is awesome. Does that work for you? Yes, because when I someone sent me something in a 316th the other day and I could not figure out how to get that into a quarter. Mm, right. Yeah. That point to point resize can be beneficial. If you don't have it, you can always, sometimes what I'll do is I'll draw 
a line out here. Let me just turn on my crosshair so you can see this. I'll just like use a line and draw a line kind of parallel to this area over here. And then if I open it up, that should be pretty close to 30 feet in here. I mm -hmm. change my number style to, let's just switch it over to feet and fractional inches. You can see it's pretty close to 30 feet, but you can use that as also a scale and then resize both of this and the line the the item if you use the ratio of that in your transform replicate you can resize that and use a scale factor so for to divide that 30 foot two inches whatever it was by 30 feet i'm going to get a resize factor and i could just paste that in as a resize factor using that transform okay so now that this is on a separate layer i can draw right on top of this and then just turn that layer off Yep. So if I use my wall tool in here and I just kind of trace over the, the top of it, uh, where are we at here? And let's just assume that I've drawn a couple of walls in here, right? And then if I finish it up, just tap on that. You can open up your layer display or the object layer properties and then turn it off and you've isolated it. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Does that, does that answer all your questions? It definitely does. Yes. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Okay. Do I have any other questions out there? Um, you can use the raise your hand icon. Oh, Marge Stimson, we have you here. I'll unmute your mic and you can ask your question. Hi. Hi, this hi Marge. Is Marge and hi. I'm from uh, Southern Missouri and I am drawing a house plan that is. Uh, what we call a uh, horse barn roof style, where oh, the uh, <laughs> where okay. the it's forty eight feet wide, fourteen uh, feet on each side. Uh, the owner calls them flanks of the home, and um, then the center section will be twenty by forty feet deep. Okay, and eighteen foot of that is going to be the kitchen with a nine foot ceiling. And of course, um, it's going to have two different, or actually three different roof, but two different levels of the roof. So the middle section is going to be up higher. I'm okay. stuck on trying to figure out how to get the um, ceiling on the kitchen, which will also be a loft area. And the rest of that 40-foot um, area is going to be a cathedral ceiling. Okay, yeah. And oh, I, <laughs> I haven't found any kind of template that would help me with um, the weight-bearing, load-bearing walls in the living area mm -hmm. or how to do that. Okay. Are you using Chief Architect Premier, March? Yes. Okay. And I'm on 12th now. Okay, sure. So, um, well, a couple things I could point you to. One, we're going to do a okay. specific... Um, session on roofs and how uh, room heights and walls can change your your roofs. But if right. I were to look at um, pointing you in the right direction for uh, this, uh, I guess you called it a horse barn, right? <laughs> I did. It must be pretty nice for those guys to have their own kitchen. Um, <laughs> really? It's <laughs> actually, you know, it's a family. It's um, you know, now they're doing shouts, which is the the barn and the uh, shop and a house put together oh, in a barn okay. form okay. in our so, area. And so we call those a, house, a horse barn, huh? <laughs> yeah. And well, okay. this one is is a little bit different where the uh, center section is actually taller. doesn't mm -hmm. have the gamber roof like a barn would. Okay. And then on the sides, it's it's less, right? It's uh, less, on the less sides, high. Less, yes. It'll have eight foot on that on the um, yeah. exterior. Mm -hmm. so, so, so real quickly, let me just delete this. Well, probably what I would just kind of point you to is let's say that you draw your main section, and I'm just using random dimensions here, not your 48 okay. or so. That's fine. And so this is going to be the center section, and it's going to have a higher ceiling. Right. And so if I were to double click on this, and Go into the room, 
let me switch my number scale back to fractional inches. So right now that's a 10 foot ceiling. And if we were to add, how much taller is the center part? Uh, it's going to be at least 14 feet. Okay, so if I just add four feet, that gets me to 14 here in right. the center portion. Okay, so now that center portion is 14 feet. So then for the sides or the flanking, I'm gonna come in here and we'll just extend this out, something like that. Down to the side. And these are gonna use the default 10 foot that we had in, in the template plan built. So 10 foot, 10 foot, 14 foot, right? Right. And so if we build our roof, and let's just build, build this with a six, and then switch over to the roof plan. So it's looking a little bit crazy in here. So probably what <laughs> I'm gonna do is take these walls here and we'll just set them to a gable. And then when you look at this in a 3D view, you're probably gonna then wanna start to figure out how you might raise this up or change the, mm -hmm. the style it's, in here to- It's actually a three, Oh, I'm sorry. It's actually a 312 pitch, so that'll make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, so then at that point, if you want these walls, to, you know, poke up above the roof, and you're you're going to change the pitch off to the side of those, then you know, with the manual roof tools, you can break those roofs, or you can change the roof pitch in in the wall, and start to get to the point where it's coming into play. And okay. you know, if you want to, if you want to email your plan in, we, we can take a peek at it. Um, we also do one-on-one -on -one training if that's of interest to you. But I have done got, quite a bit of that. <laughs> you, you've been doing that? Okay, good. Yes, I had. Okay. Um, in fact, on, the, on their first plan, I I did a lot with, um, oh, I can't think of his name in Washington. But anyway, it was great. Um, one question on by, and I, I had driven, I had drawn the, the full exterior and then put in the walls in the middle. So I actually should start with the center portion, drawing it and then adding to it. You, you don't have to start um, at, as I did it there. Uh, I think the key thing was making sure that your, your ceiling heights, which control your roofs, then get mm -hmm. set appropriately. Because when I came in here, and selected the room heights. I could have done that after the fact. You could have drawn the complete outer footprint and then put in a couple of walls and then just opened up the room and changed your ceiling height. That may be what I, I'll try that first and then redraw if I need to. Yeah. This, is, this has been a great help. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks Marge. Scott, next we have Felicia Juice. Um, Felicia, if you unmute your mic, you'll be able to ask your question. Go ahead. Felicia, if you if you happen to be out there and maybe your mic isn't working, you can always chat that question as we, we can also repeat it. All right. Um, it looks like we're kind of slowing down on questions. Um, any other last questions? We can fit two or three in here. Oh, we got a bunch of hands all of a sudden. I have one from Sarah Hansen. Go ahead, Sarah. Yes, this is um, just a quick question about when you do your plans, do you typically do rich text or just regular text? And what's the benefits between the two? Oh, that's a good question, Sarah. So if, uh, if I understand right, we have two text tools. One's a rich text tool and one is a plain text tool. So, so what's the difference? Usually I'm using rich text and let me just go back into the program. Felicia, I saw you said you didn't have a microphone out there. So just chat your question in if you want to um, and we'll get to that here in a minute. So one of the things that when you are using the text tool, and if I click on it here, and let's just use the rich text tool, and I'll come in here and type in uh, something like six and 12 pitch. 
<clears throat> so one of the things that you can do with rich text is there is additional formatting that you can control. So one of them is like being able to underline and you've got font styles that you can change and you have quite a bit of control over rich text. It's more of what the, I guess, modern text would be considered. So in this case, <clears throat> that's rich text and you can control lots of settings in here, whether it's the, you know, the font, the layout, there's also settings in here that you can come in and control, you know, bullets and numbering and those kinds of things as well. So when would you use regular text or simple text, which is just below the rich text tool? You can use this. In some cases, you can control with your layer set and change it to be at a different scale. So in this case, it might be easier to show this in a floor plan view. Let's assume that I use this simple text tool in here and we come in here and we put in um, 14 foot ceiling height. <clears throat> and right now that's on a layer called text roofs, right? And it's pretty small. And if we just click on that, you see it show up over here. And the layer for this text can change the size of it. So in my roof plan, it's showing up. And if we just kind of come in here and look at the text style for that, it's using the default. And if we just peek at what size default is, it's using six inches for the default. Okay. <clears throat> so now let me switch over my plan view to, let's say, the kitchen and bath view. That layer is not on for the roof text. So let's turn the layer on. We'll come down here and find the text for the roof. Where are you? There it is. Okay, so that's turned on. And the scale for that is at a half inch. So if we switch back and forth, I can actually change the scale of this. So I'm sending text out and want to change the scale of all of my text for a different view. I could use the simple text and just simply by changing the say plan view or the layer set, you can change it based on the scale you want to send that view out. So you have a little bit of flexibility there. This simple text, you don't have all of the same settings for the underlying and other formatting controls for this basic text. I'm right, the whole, all the text has, you can underline it, but everything in that the text has to be underlined. It's not like or Right, <laughs> right, not part of it. Right. So typically I use the rich text for most all of my things, but this is one use case. You can change the text size by just changing the layer set. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't know I could do that. Thank you yeah. so much. Okay. Hey, Scott. Felicia wrote in her question okay. and it is, um, she's wondering what makes the polylines easier to draw with your space planning tools than using the space planning boxes. Um, and if there's a way to change the defaults for each room in space planning. Okay. Also for the planning tool view, how did you create it? And I think she might mean these boxes on your screen here. Okay. Like which layers are you using? Okay, sure. So Felicia, um, one of the questions here, if I understand right, is why am I using the just the pylon boxes here that I've created instead of the the space planner? And then I think your next question is, is can you change the default sizes of the space planner boxes? And so your first question, why do I use my my own space planning? I don't I use predefined room sizes and it just works for me. I like to see the edge style for the length of each edge. 
And then I also have the ability to put the square footage in here. So you see in this bedroom suite here, I've got the dimensions on each side. The other thing that we had a question earlier from Charles was the ability to break a room. In this case, we took the entry area, made it an L-shaped room. I don't have the same capability with the space planner box. I can't put breaks in there. So when I'm assembling these diagrams together in the bubble diagram process, I don't have that same flexibility. So it works for me to use these boxes in that way. Uh, I can certainly use the space planner boxes. You can't predefine the size of these boxes when you come up into your menu system and we look at uh, these different boxes that get placed. It's going to place a default 12 by 12 room in this case for the bedroom. But what you could do is exactly what I have on the screen here is you could place this and then resize it to the typical size you might use. And then just save that as your own space planner file that I have right here. And then you've got all of your rooms at the typical size you might begin with when you start a new project. So that's that's my um, that's my read on why I use those those boxes and how you might resize the space planner box. Hope that helps. Thanks, Scott. We have another question here from Stephanie Samuel. Um, Stephanie, you can unmute your mic and ask your question. Thank you. Um, hi, Scott. Hi, Stephanie. Um, I'm just starting with really. Um, managing my files and I, I it's I think this might be a simple question but should the elevations be on a different layer or you know should it be saved as a separate um file to the folder or how do you how do you manage all the different layers I, I kind of move back and forth between the floor plan and the elevation and make sure things are kind of lining up the way I want them to be so what would you do with that okay so in your floor plan you're mm -hmm. gonna you're gonna create <clears throat> all of your walls and build your roof, and then at some point you're gonna generate your elevations, whether it's exterior elevations or interior. Any one in particular or both? Uh, mostly interior because uh, I'm doing um, kitchens and baths, and mostly interior work. So I'm actually working with um, chief architect interiors, not the premier. Okay, sure. So <clears throat> if I were to kind of show you the way my layout sheet is. Let me just pull that up real quick. So <clears throat> this is a 24 by 36 mm -hmm. sheet of paper here. And you can, you know, if you're using an 11, do you usually use 11 by 17 or what size do you I, use for your? I can use, I can do 24 by 36 because I have a large format printer. So I'm good. Oh, okay. So in this case, I've got uh, a lot of space on here. I'm able to get, I think, most everything here at a half inch scale. Mm -hmm. And so you see my floor plan in the upper right, and then my mm -hmm. elevations in the bottom, and then a few material selections, and then fixture schedule and some notes. So typically, what I'm going to do to generate something like this, I close a couple of those things. Okay. Let's go up, let's switch over. So first thing is, I like to use, say, plan views. So if mm -hmm. I switch over to the kitchen and bath view, and we zoom in, here's that project we're looking at. So the save plan view, maybe uh, one of our staff members here can um, chat out the link to our saved plan views uh, video or webinar. But save plan views, change your layer sets, and change your defaults so that you can turn on dimensions that look differently because if I switch this over to an electrical plan, right? You don't see the dimensions, you don't see some of the other details, so it's switching the layer set and defaults behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So typically when I'm gonna do something like a kitchen and bath plan and I've got these saved cameras, which are elevation views, right? Yep. And if you were to double click on one of those or use the camera to open it, 
that will then generate the elevation view when we get that open here. And so that's elevation is embedded in the plan. And then when I have my layout open, let me just uh, open up the layout so I can grab one real quick. Let's just do a new layout. And we'll just come over here. What page do I typically send those out to 19? <clears throat> so here's my typical page that I might send my, my bathroom out to. And let me go here. There we go. So from this view, you just come down and send it out to layout. And then you define what your scale is, half inch. And then you can move that around on that layout sheet when you've got it. And then you kind of organize your drawings. That's that's a typical process that I would go through to manage that. Let's make sure I'm on the right page here. Where are we at here? Oh, I put it on the wrong page. There we go. Paste it in there. So is that dynamic in that as you change the floor plan or move things around, that also... Um, changes as well. Yeah, they're linked. So if I okay. double click on this, right, it's mm -hmm. going to open up the view. And when I'm in this view, let's say I make a change. I've mm -hmm. decided that um, maybe this window isn't what I want, right? So okay. if I hit the uh, delete key here, and then I close that view, uh, let's make sure that we refresh that. What's going to happen is, <clears throat> since they're linked, that view will then update. Take the second here. That okay. view updates on there. So you move a wall, you add a window, you add a door. Those are always linked to the to the plan. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. All right. Thank you. Because uh, and I uh, did get the link that your uh, team sent out. And I will definitely take a look at it for a little bit more in depth. But I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then I would just add one one additional thing on that is um, when you're doing your file management, just make sure that, you know, you save your plan file and your layout file. I recommend saving it in the same folder since they are linked. If you move them, it causes, you know, you have to relink them and find them, track them down. But that's just good practice to save those into the same folder, your plan file and your layout file. And then it makes the process a lot easier. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you wanted to, it looks like Marge had one follow-up question. If you'd like to take that quickly and then we can wrap up. I think. Okay, great. Go ahead, Marge. Hi, I did have another question, and thank you. I've already fixed my wall issue. Huh, quick. You know when you kind of have a brain, uh, uh, just a, your brain just freezes on you, and I guess that's what had happened to me all last week. Um, I've changed my walls to the 14-foot height. Now, to put that uh, floor in my um, over my kitchen area, do I need to just, because I have an invisible wall to separate the kitchen area from the living room, do I okay. need to just use that 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 area to add a floor? Would this be um, a floor above, so it's on a loft? Yes. So I would do that probably, Marge, through a uh, second story. So build a new okay. floor, and then you would, you know, the program will automatically generate the platform for you. And then you're going to need to figure out how to manage, take a cross-section view and manage the elevation to make sure that that floor is at the right level. And then your, you know, your main center area, maybe there's no floor over that. And so you would need to maybe um, just coordinate that, removing, you know, any room definition on the second floor for that center area, if that's how your mm -hmm. design is, is laying out. So basically, basically the second floor... Uh, put that at the right height and then have it open to the living room area. Yeah. You, that could, second you could take that, you know, that center area in between the two, if you have a loft on each side, you just make that an open to below room. Okay. 
And then there would be okay. no platform open to below, just remove the floor platform in in a room. Okay. Thanks a lot, Scott. That's yeah. what I needed. Appreciate oh, it. I absolutely yeah. love this virtual format. <laughs> well, we'll be back next Thursday. Hopefully you'll join us. I'll see you. Hey, I want to thank everybody for attending today. Um, we've got on our session some fun stuff coming up with the uh, building the project. So as we are uh, building this house, we've started off with uh, with our new plan and template and space planning uh, tool. And we're going to go through, as I come out to our events, we're going to go through and build this house. The next session will be next Thursday. And we're going to cover massing and conceptualization. So we'll take the bubble diagram. We'll figure out how to get to a floor plan. And then kind of the, the trade-offs of looking at you know, roof styles and massing and how that works and really how you might create the walls. And if you want to join us for that session, that will be next Thursday at the same time. And as you kind of scroll down, of course, we have some other sessions going on. We'll follow that with doors and windows, foundations, roofs, and then ceilings. So we're going to go through each one of the main components of the project. And then, of course, you can bring your questions and uh, either ask them live or chat them in. I want to thank everybody for attending. Have a great day. And hopefully we'll see you back here next Thursday, same place, same time. Thanks a lot.